o'clock, May 31st. We're on the way to uh, the airport to pick up John David. We're in the LA traffic. So you can rest easy. We've got two and a half hours and we're almost there. So we'll be sure to be there when he arrives. With a video on the hillsides over here. Here he goes. Well, and <clears throat> it's now about 20 minutes later, and we thought the rush hour was over. And here we are, and we're in the fast lane, beginning to move. But we've been doing 30 miles an hour. Doing 30 miles an hour, Sanders says. And we're probably about uh, 20 miles from the airport. It'll probably takes an hour to get there. a sign now that says LA Airport. We're almost there. Yay. Well, here we are at the LA Airport. An hour and 20 minutes early, Sue. So we'll be sure and be there when he arrives. I don't see the sign that says Eastern yet. Maybe they don't have a... You can see the traffic is heavy here even at the airport. I've been here before an hour ahead of flight time and missed a flight, so we're gonna have to be here real early to get him on to Japan and we bring him back Monday. And we're planning to do that. This is the uh, symbol for the LA airport. This is a restaurant up above in the center between the two main terminal buildings. I think you're getting my nose. And I got some of Sanders' nose. I forgot, you have to move this thing slowly. I just moved it quickly. We're looking for the eastern sign. I think it's around the other side. There it is, right there. Six. There it is, eastern. Terminal 6. working on our crossword puzzle. We're at the gate. About a half an hour ahead of time, Sue. So we're here when he gets here. The plane is actually getting in a little early. 11.10 instead of 11.30. So we hope to be seeing him in about five or 10 minutes. Here's the gate where he'll come. And there's where the plane will be, right out there. Well, this is the plane that John David is on. An Eastern Flight 81 from Atlanta. Flight is a 767, I think. I'm not sure. They're shutting down the engines now. They're going to pull it into the gate. They're attaching the uh, tow truck to the front wheels, as you can see. Sue, so I want you to know the plane got in at 11 instead of 11:30, but we were here early. <laughs> Santa wanted to make sure I said that to you. Well, they have it attached now. I'm going to slowly turn in here. Santa, would you like to say something? No, but you're going to use the false film before he even gets here, and I wanted to film him at Disneyland. I mean, at um, Universal, Universal Studios. Studios and I will. I've only done a few minutes. I'm filming you for this for you, John David. You're on that plane somewhere. And this is what was going on while you were waiting to get to the gate. You can see they're turning it now Look behind the tow truck. And they'll be pulling it into the gate. That way I've got the whole plane for you. As soon as they turn just a little bit more, you'll be able to see it all. Do you know what kind it is now? Uh, it looks like a 767 or an L1011, one of those two. Or a DC-10. <laughs> Take your choice. Here's a good head-on shot for you, John David. This is the plane you were on, Atlanta, all the way to California. 
California. That's a good shot right there. Here he comes. There he is waving. He hasn't seen me yet. Smile, you're on candid camera. <laughs> Good. Are you sure you got everything that you brought on the plane with you? Yes, we did. Would you, you like to speak to the, to the camera here? Say hi to mom. Hey, hey mom. <laughs> so you made it safely. We have record you made it safely. All right. <laughs> John David waiting for his luggage. Here's Sandra waiting for John David. I'm waiting for John David. Say something. I'm waiting for John David. Here's John David just gave Sandra a present. I like it, I like it. I didn't even open it yet. <laughs> John David, stand over this way. This is the thing that's famous for the LA airport, that restaurant. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is the landmark you see every time you watch movies and you see a plane coming in to land at LAX. You usually see this restaurant. It's in the middle of the airport. Well, he's here, Sue, safe and sound, on the ground. Kiss the ground, John David. <laughs> Here's Sandra opening her present in the parking lot. She won't even wait till she gets in the car. I in the parking lot, and I'll see if I like the present. If I don't like it, back he goes. <laughs> there she is, opening it up. Sue, except she doesn't cook for me anymore. You can't wear that when we go out to eat, Sandra. This cute. Get out there, John Day, with Sandra. She this I was I was John David doesn't think he wants it. You know well, here we are, riding down Century Boulevard. John David in the front seat. We're leaving the airport. Did you have a good flight, John David? Good. Well, welcome to California. We're bound now for Universal Studios. And we'll probably get back on the air then and talk to you when we get there. You don't have anything to say, Sandra? Susan Tate and Steve Angie, their band, Tate, that we're playing with John David. There's a mother giving a plug for her daughter. Okay, that's it. This is downtown LA. You can see the big tall buildings. They're designed to withstand earthquakes, so if you're up at the top, they move around a little bit when the earth shakes. There's John David gazing at the... We're going to look over here. I don't see it now. We'll see on the, on the side of the hill, we'll see the famous Hollywood sign, but right now we can't see it because of the buildings. So we'll check it out a little bit later. Here we are, just entering the... Hollywood Freeway 101. And we'll proceed out a little further north and go to Universal Studios. John David can see how they make movies and also see all the fun things they do there. Here's Sandra being a California driver, flipping from one lane to another. <laughs> and I'll let you see the Hollywood sign on the Hollywood Hills. There it is over there. there it is. Oops. Freeway wall and the smog. Hopefully here in a second we'll see it again. Still freeway wall up there. Okay, there's a clear picture of it. You see it right there. The palm trees and right through the palm trees. You see the famous Hollywood sign.
little smoke up there from the smokehouse for some atmosphere, and we can get started. All right, guys, here we go. Now, as you saw a moment ago, our stunt doubles for Crockett and Tubbs have managed to ruffle some feathers here in Flamingo. And in this next scene, they're going to move in and collect some hard, hard evidence. But before they get around to that, our band of smugglers, they've got some other ideas. Something like a dynamite surprise party. Stand by, everybody. Here we go. Gentlemen, cameras are rolling. Huge special effects. And give me action. if we want. And gentlemen, you stand by for the rescue of Tubbs. All right, here we go now. Camera trolling. Cue special effects. Watch him and give me action. We have over 500 sets depicting areas all of Pretty Island for the movie Jaws, as well as Cabot Cove, Maine for Murder, She Wrote, starring Angel Lansbury, Sunday nights on CBS. I grab to make some time, what do you say? As you drive on into Cylon Battleship, have those cameras ready because who knows what will go on inside. Flip your flashes on, too. charge here and why are we here? So in fact it's made of a flame retardant material. As we get closer to you, you can see it's not a house at all, it's a facade. The facade is fringe and falls front. We do our exterior shooting here and then we go to a sound stage to do the interior shots. Right now we're getting close to the front level. There are a lot of writers, directors. How are you doing Mark? Mm -hmm. That's good. Mark come all the way from England to help us out today. How old are you? Mm-hmm. 11 years old. Got a girlfriend? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we didn't hear about this yet. Electronically adjusted to filter out the color blue. We'll combine the images above along with a new background. And look at this. We get Mark cruising over the Hollywood Hills. E.T. Give a big wave to everybody, Mark. Go ahead and wave. Now wave with the other hand. Now wave with both hands. Look, no hands. <laughs> Good time. Oh, I am good. It's over. The most popular action series on television. Visually stunning. 
It sets action trends and fashion trends nationwide. And it is the best sounding show on TV. But it doesn't start that way. Listen to how a scene sounds when it's photographed. Ready for your cue and gunshots. First, we're going to give the scene a more dramatic feeling by adding music. This is Grammy Award-winning composer and musician Jan Hammer. He not only writes the music for Miami Vice, he performs it as well. On Miami Vice, one of the things we've been able to accomplish is to create a complete sense of mood and atmosphere. We can hear how much the music adds to the scene. Then the finishing touches in the audio production process are added. The sound effects. That's right, Bob. The sound effects, those guys on the screen are called Foley artists. And what they do is they add in sounds after the filming takes place. Now I'm going to show you how that's done. We'll get this. Feels as stupid as it looks. <laughs> oh, no. Step in the kitty litter. Oh. Get him done. Now that bad guy, he's going to get shot here. And so we'll get the brick out, throw that through the window. One, two, three. Oh, it just slipped right out. <laughs> oh. Let that thing go here. Uh, I'll that back over here. Yeah, the old foam rubber brick in the audience gang. Works every time. Fantastic effects like the ones you've just seen are conceived and brought to life by highly specialized motion picture artists using tools like the ones here. Tools is a harsh word, Robert. Would it be acceptable for me to assume control at this point? Please, be my guest. I'm sure we'd all like to hear the inside story. Thank you, Robert. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Hell 9000. You may have seen me in the motion picture 2001, or in the more recent 2010. Now look, you're way out of line. Is my performance satisfactory? You're doing fine, but why don't you tell everybody about the process we call motion control? Demonstration in progress. Motion control photography is a process in which we create the illusion of spaceships flying through the universe. In motion control, the model never moves. The camera does. As you can see, a computerized camera is now moving the length of the ship against a black background. By adding a field of stars, we now create the illusion of the ship flying through space. Demonstration complete. Hey, well, thanks, Al. Maybe you should go back to grab a coffee, huh? Now, Patrick, up front, give us a wave. Patrick, Patrick today is playing our Russian cosmonaut. Now, for his character, he's been in space a few times. He's kind of the old pro, the hero. Uh, Patrick, get in the character. Let's see you look really brave and macho. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in the back, we got Deborah. How are you doing, Deborah? Deborah playing our American astronaut for her character. It's her first time in space. Let alone going on a spacewalk, and she is scared. She's really pretty scared. <laughs> we'll be flying them above us here. You'll see the live action above. Special effects on the big screen television monitors. So here's the setup. Action! Establish orbit. Orbit established. Prepare to engage mission. Colonel Belosky, come in. Wagner. Ever wonder how we get the uh, bionic people to jump up on top of a three-story building or an 
of a bridge like there this. Goes. Going back together. A lot of training. Actually, we take a stunt double and we'll put them up on top of the bridge and have them jump off back. Bob, look up ahead. It's King Kong, he's got the bridge, he's got the cables and they're breaking. Ten Commandments, parting of the Red Sea. Now, when Cecil B. DeMille first parted the Red Sea back in 1923, he didn't have the technology and the pumps that we have today, so he had to improvise. And what he did was take a large block of frozen gelatin, he cut it in half and separated it, and then with gas jets, melted it back together while filming it. Then he reversed the film, and it looks like it is parting. Pretty ingenious, huh? In 1956, when they remade the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, they used 10,000 actors walking down Where's a lonely, Joe's deserted at? dirt road with matte paintings on the side. Now keep your feet up and your cameras up. Try to stay dry. Look out on Bob's side is the lagoon from the creature. <laughs> Bora Bora, the monster that Universal has ever come out with in film, has walked through this courtyard. Frankenstein, the mummy, the wolfman, Count Dracula. We used it a few years ago for an episode of Moonlight. It was Sybil Shepherd and Bruce Willis called Atomic Shakespeare. And it was a takeoff on Taming of the Street. Uh, buddy, you're not supposed to go out there fishing. Hey, uh, George, look behind you. There's a fish coming. George is a big fish. Uh-oh, George, get out of the water. George, get out of the water. Oh, no, help, help, help. Hey, bye, bye, George. Bye, George. Nice job. He's on it, too. Well, we've been trying to catch those sharks for the past couple of days, so we put some bait on this yellow boy out here. And as soon as he takes the boy, we have got him. Bonnie's got the boy. Bonnie's got the boy! by a 
Alfred Hitchcock Psycho. Now the Psycho house is built on three-quarter scale, which means it's a little bit smaller. And they do the tell is merely a shell. It means it's there's nothing inside the rooms. Except for room number one and the office. Room number one blood on the shower in black and white film looks kind of gray. This movie blood looks gray on black and white film, so they needed to find another blood substance that would look more like blood. So they experimented around and finally came up something that looked like blood, and they used There's something in the syrup. window. Mm -hmm. And the sound of the knife going into the body. The sound of a knife going into a watermelon. Now when Psycho came out in 1960, at the end, they wanted an area where they had more control. So they built the backdrop and the small lake and they painted the backdrop six shades of blue to match the waters and the sky in the Bahamas. And they cut that in with the film. They actually shot on location and you cannot tell the difference. Except if you look closely when they're filming a couple of times, they had birds roosting on the top of the backdrop. <laughs> small problem. Now we're coming up to the highest elevation on the Universal Tour, 12,000 feet, if you believe the sign. A little bit of melting snow and ice. You ever wonder how we make snow in the movies? In the old days, they used to use chopped up chicken feathers or bleached cornflakes. Today we use shaved plastic. Now we're taking the... Oh, we're not taking the back road. Oh, we're going to go right through our ice tunnel. What is now we have through our glacier oh, here, no. fire this tunnel. So everybody be very, very still and be very quiet. We don't want to start any kind of an avalanche. Oh. If you go inside and start to feel a little queasy or uneven, just close your eyes. And above all, be very quiet. Turn around and come back. <laughs> Stay out there. I'm going to zoom in on you. Say hello. <laughs> David standing by Jaws. See how big he is. Stay right there. the ship shoots at the submarine. There it goes. Yeah, there it Yeah, I got it. Good. <laughs> John David. John David, get in the car. Oh, it's locked? Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, get Sandra. Hold still. Look at him. I don't 
<laughs> Put your head through. Your hands through. Okay. <laughs> look up, look up. <laughs> they were foot itches. Set your foot down. <laughs> Here they come. Just had their pictures made. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, 
I missed him. Tell him to come down to shoot. Thank <laughs> you. 
kids coming through here. I don't know what happened to John David. We're waiting for him to appear at any moment now. Where are you, John David? Seems to be a lot of kids out there in line. be coming down this chute. That's what I told him to do. <laughs> He's waiting in line, Santa, to come down this chute. come after all their shopping. They bought all the goodies. They got everybody but something but Sue. So Sue, you got left out. They went in this little Look shop right you. over here. Sitting here a beer. I'm sitting here no sipping wonder. on a cold beer and now Sandra came up and get it. But actually I got the beer because John David needs one more glass. We're going to give it says Universal Studios. A set of glasses. Yeah. Right. So you give her these glasses. Okay. So I think we're done now. We're going to head out. Yeah, he wasn't he just got the beer thinking of others. That's right. I got, I got the glass. I got it, and I had to drink it. I couldn't put it in a bag full. Right? Right. All right. John David walking down. There's a stunt man down there just done a show. Huh? Okay. Here we are. Oh, yeah, I get one. Okay, they'll give me a dollar. Okay. Thanks much. No, can't see the guy's face. Anyway, <laughs> here's John David. All right. Oh, there. Good to see you, John David. Okay. You want to go for a walk? You want to go? You do. Well, where's Santa? Santa, you want to go for a walk? Where is she? Well, you know we can get. <laughs> Dude, John David, you want to go for a walk? <laughs> Julie, this is Santa. Santa, we say hi. Hey. <laughs> you want to hold Adam now? Let him say hi. Julie, this is Adam. Well, Adam, Adam wants hold. to go for a walk. Adam, you want to go for a walk? I'll try to hold him. <laughs> Adam, want to go for a walk? Want to go for a walk? <laughs> What's the matter, John David? <laughs> Julie, this is Adam. Adam, say hey. <laughs> walk. Adam, you want to go outside? Want to go for a walk? He's shaking. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna go for a walk? Do you? Oh, cinnamon dancing a little bit. <laughs> That's cinnamon. Yeah, she wants to.
Yep, yeah, that's the beach. Minus 50 degrees. I don't know what he's picked up there. It's not being found. Oops, it's pretty cold. He's, he's standing on his tiptoes. <laughs> not that it'll help, but he's standing on his tiptoes. Oops. <laughs> There aren't too many big ones. There's a little more here. A little more. There it goes. And there it goes. This is John David going out to test the waves. He's all excited. We were going to go to SeaWorld. But he was so excited when he saw the size of those waves that we had to postpone SeaWorld while he got in the waves and he took, got on Tom's boogie board and got on his wetsuit, Tom's wetsuit, which a little bit big for him, but it'll still keep him warmer than if he was. I mean, that water's really cold. It's really cold. But he's so excited, he doesn't care. He said he goes in his pool and it's cold, so I took his word for it. I just hope he'll be careful. I came down here on the beach where there's a lifeguard station, though, ha <laughs> ha, just to be sure. He rode one wave in. He's going back to catch another one. There he is. I thought he'd get that wave, but he seems to have passed it by. He's getting rather selective by now about which wave he's riding in. Oops, he's taking that one. Here he comes. Oops, lost in the, lost in the puddle. Hey, wiping his face. He hates that salt water. But I told him it came with the ocean. There's nothing I can do about it. Those are like big waves, John David. Get that one. Get that one, John David. Oh, he it right up. I'm, he's not very far out. Let me show you. I'm standing on the shore. If I can find the unzoom. Now you get some idea. He's, he's not so far out. He's only about three waves out. He picked a place to surf carefully where there were no, um, no surfers to come down on top of him. David. Get that one, John David. One of them looks good waves to me. There, that's a good one. Get it, get it, get it. Keeping him warm. <laughs> it 
it doesn't really fit him tight enough to hold it, the water inside, so I don't know if it can do much good, but I thought it was better to try it. Here he comes. Nope. I think he's waiting too late to catch the waves. What's that one, John David? Good. Nope. There's really just a light flicker on off. It's going to... And King Kong, you can, it lets off hot air out of his mouth, and it, he shakes the bridge, and it starts tilting his way. It's weird. Um, Jaws, you come up on this lake, and you see a fin go out, and there's this guy fishing, and they go, get out, get out. And then um, you see some bubbles come up to right beside the boat, and then the boat goes down backwards, and then you see red blood shoot up in the water. And then all of a sudden, right beside your boat, I mean your little train you're on, um, Jaws comes up. Hey, fine. Here we are, are just arriving at SeaWorld. This is the fountain at the entrance to SeaWorld. And here is the tower. Right away, I have to tell you, John David wants to go up to the Space Tower. And I told him I'm not going, but I might let him go. Here we go. One little show, and then we got down to it. We're having pizza. How uh, was the pizza, John David? Mm -hmm. He likes the pizza. Okay, very good. Here are the seals. This is a 
close up of Shamu, the killer whale, before the show begins. Just resting and getting ready for the show. This is the backdrop for the whale show. And I told John David that if you sit in the first few rows, you're going to get wet. So if you look right over here, you'll find John David sitting right there in the blue seats where he's going to get wet. As they are you, reaching legs up to 30 feet, they can weigh as much as 12,000 pounds. In fact, when baby Shamu was born, she was all red as Shamu, striking black and white coloration. This disruptive pattern yields these pectoral flippers. Although these flippers may appear featureless, if you were to look at an x-ray, you would see the elements of a Don sitting up here. He's supposed to be watching John David surf. He doesn't know that I'm watching him. And now I'll show you John David. This is John David catching a wave. He couldn't wait to come back out today. Steve was going to come with him, but when Steve heard there were five foot swells, he decided he'd go down to the cliffs and surf with the pros. And John David came back out here and says this is just his second day of boogie boarding. It probably was the best decision. And David was perfectly happy. We'll go by and see Steve and the band play at the church later on today anyway, so we'll get to see them. Meanwhile, John David's having a great time. Here's Don. He now sees me recording you. every now and then watches the surfers. There's John David somewhere in the middle of all that foam. Dummy was standing there filming. Uh, here's a train going by, right by the beach. You can see it. It's headed for Los Angeles. This is a commuter train. People live down here in beautiful San Diego and they ride the train up to Los Angeles back and forth each day to work. But here's Sandra standing there taking pictures of John David and a wave got her all wet. She's going icky icky. <laughs> Let's see, where's John David? There he is. He has really been getting some good rides. The surf is up. Way out, out here, where the big guys go, the real surfers, John David was going to go with uh, Steve this morning so he could learn to be one of those big guys, but Steve felt like the waves were just going to be too dangerous where he was. So John David's come here and he's gotten some really good rides. I've been watching him for almost an hour now. He's going to be really pooped out. But he's really enjoying it. And we're so glad he's here, Sue. 
and he's really a nice young man, and we're enjoying him very much. We're glad you let him come be with us a little while. He's gotten some real good rides, and he's started out a little tentative, but he's gotten out there where the good ones are. Not way out there where the, where the surfers are, but a little bit further out so he can catch them and get a good ride all the way in. He's really enjoying it. Well, back to Sandra. There's John David. He got all the way into the shore this time. All the way in. That's what he wanted me to get on camera. There you go, John David. No. <laughs> a little roll there. <laughs> John David freezing to death. How was it, John David? Cold. <laughs> was it any fun at all? <laughs> it's fun, but it's cold. <laughs> you mean you don't want to go anymore? Oh, I do, but it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> you have a one-track mind. <laughs> Tell what? us if you have a one-track mind. Tell us about those great waves you caught. Which ones? The one that pulled me under, or what? <laughs> no, the ones that brought you to shore. <laughs> it's just. Waved and I just rode it in. Yeah, it was good, huh? This is Don helping John David change for the first time out in the open. He's never done this before. I told him he'd have plenty of privacy, but you notice there are plenty of people walking by, and he has no idea that I had a video camera on him. He would croak. We'll just get a good scene of this so he can know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there went the first layer. Okay, here go the shorts. He's gonna make it. He's just not used to doing it. I tell him the surfers do it all the time, but he's just not used to it. There you go, John Davis. See, it can be done. As you can see, I was not that close to the scene. I just had him zoomed in. This is John and Bill Flynn. Johnny. Yeah, they own the camera. Yeah, they're the camera owners that we've been using all this time. They're really nice neighbors. They're out washing the car this morning. <laughs> Here they are. Say hi, Matt. Say hi. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. This is John David. This is um, Saturday, and we're getting ready to go to the San Diego Zoo. 
and there's the entrance. Here we are in the zoo, and there goes a little long-legged fellow to join his playmates. Don and Tom have gone down the Tiger River. Right this way. I didn't go. It's too steep. I climb back up, but my knees bother me. But this is the way they went in, and I'll whistle them as they come back out again. I always couldn't find the uh, the cat, the fish, these cats, the fishing cats. Couldn't find them. And the tigers were all asleep. Yeah, they're lined up in the cave. So you could see them. Whoops. Here we are. Get a little closer, John. Maybe. No, closer to Sandra. Here we are, waiting to get on the bus to tour the zoo. Don't mess with them, okay? Not me and Pee Wee. Well, I envy them. What do you think, baby? The largest member of the Gibbons family. My name. Look at her. Oh, look. Look. She's got a mind of her own. Her mom wants uh, her to uh, come to her. Yeah, but no. Well, some things never change. Look at her. Check her out. <laughs> what a light. There you go. <laughs> oh, what a tongue of a giraffe. And you might have to take my word regarding the tongue. I don't know, because if you can see a portion of it, that's great. But if not, it's so long they can actually reach back, clean their eyes, and away, but nonetheless, still capable of moving out. The rest of the uh, family. Of course, that's the key to survival. Now, that ability to rapidly adapt. <laughs> What? Pearl grain color, we have paradise greens. Where he is? Her name is Checkers. <laughs> Checkers has been with the Watchful Society of San Diego for 28 years. Oh, she's just a veritable institution, I guess one could say, out here on the Mesa. By the way, she's been a mother 11 times in those 28 years. In fact, she's outlived a couple of her offspring and her mate of many years last year, Topper. Passed to the happy hunting grounds, age 31. Found but not forgotten. At the tail end, Topper. Well, why do I keep saying Topper? That's not Topper at all. Joey. Topper's gone now. Joey is 15. Well, and about 15 feet tall, too. I'd make a great photo. Boy, I'd take that in a second. Now, they've been walking, treading terra firma for the last 15 million years. In fact, the ancient ancestor of the giraffe, they say, it looks very much like that old copy we viewed back there. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Hello. Hi. Look over and see if you their natural camouflage. Now, the striking is unique to the individual animal, folks. There are no two alike. It would be, well, that one is actually the and that is very effective camouflage in the right yeah. setting. Yeah. Yeah. Early afternoon, well, it's hot. Fish in them. They're usually encountered large herds on the African savannas, and if they group together physically, now if there's a band on the right leg, it's male, on the left leg, you guess it. The males have predominantly black plumage. Eggs, well, you've heard about them. Perhaps you've even handled one. An ostrich egg weigh upwards of four pounds. They say a four pound egg would be, oh, roughly equivalent to three dozen chicken eggs. Okay, let's leave her a treat. She really likes these omnivore bear biscuits. There you go. Okay, here she comes. She's 23 now. Castor's 19. We'll leave him one too. We'll have that later on, maybe. Would you give us another wave? Give us another wave, Bonnie. Huh? Wave. Well, we evolved from the brown bear. It's hypothesized about 50,000 years ago. Second largest member of the bear clan. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Here's one for the road run. I know you enjoy this. Oh, boy. That's <laughs> a wild one. Okay, heads up. Here it comes. There you go. No, they don't have the best aerodynamic qualities. That, that's not what they were designed for, I guess. No, she came after. Swap later on. No, all needs to return. What a pose. Nephew's head resting on the log. 
Here's John, David, and Sandra looking at the other monkeys. There's the monkeys up there somewhere. Oh, there they are. There are the monkeys. The baby's over here. Oh, look at the baby. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Can you zoom in on them? Yeah, I did. Zoom in. Here's the baby. <laughs> pull on it, pull on it. <laughs> here's the mama. And here's another beautiful guy over here. Another beautiful guy over here. Where is he? Oh yeah, he is very really cute. Sandra's favorite. Little baby. Oh, goodness. Oh wow. Hello. You beautiful creature. Where's the baby? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Here's the baby. This is Sanders' favorite here. Yeah, he's really moving this time. Wow, he's way out there. We've never seen him here. Yeah, he... we've never seen him move before. The first time we've seen him move. Where's the baby? When it comes to baby. Baby makes it way slowly. Mm -hmm. Seems rather uncertain, doesn't it? We're gonna go to the bird aviary. There's your son playing with the bushes. Y'all get up there. Oops, he flew away. Where's that zoom? Oh, there it is. We don't know what they are, but they sure are beautiful. You hear two birds right here. Your Santa bird. Santa bird, John David bird. John David's ready to take a nap. He's tired. Be careful keeping my shirt. Of course they can get to it. Little baby's sitting out in front of it. Look. Let me get you. Turn around by the bird. Walk back this way. 
Got a bird. <laughs> Two birds. Excuse me. <laughs> Here's Sandra with her friend. Here's Santa with her friend. Oh, he's afraid of it. Don't scare him. This is a bird that's making that noise. She's beautiful. Look down below, Don. Look right down here. Where? Right there. Oh, yeah. the There's another one here. Look at that. Look at his foot feathers. Mm -hmm. He makes fringe around his head. There's Santa and John David walking down this long path. Santa's worried she's got to walk back up this hill. John David's having more fun with a bamboo stick than he is with the zoo. <laughs> Here goes Sandra. A bird in the aviary. There's one there. Don't know what kind he is. There's so many in here. There's a red-headed bird. Look at that red-headed bird, John David. Look, it's bending over and sitting down. Look up beside you. Yeah. There's this redhead. A redheaded, two footed bird. Look, it's perfect. Look right by your head. The sea lions are playing king of the mountain. These three have been. They keep pushing, they keep pushing them off, but one of them's left. And they do these attacks and try to get back on. We've been watching them now for about 15 minutes. Two different ones have been king of the mountain so far. Got rid of one, and he's going to try to get rid of the other one. There he goes. Pushing him off, pushing him off. <laughs> yeah, a little rest break. And Sullivan says he's going to try again. Here he comes. Yeah, he's pushing him though, slowly, slowly. Pushing him off the mountain. They're playing king of the mountain. It's just when they, they push each other off. Look at this. Mm, here's a sneak attack on the other side. Here comes another one. He's trying to push him off. There he goes. Oh, another attack. Another attack. They're all playing King of the Mountain. There he goes, pushing. Yeah, he is. He's gonna get. He's gonna push him off the mountain. There he goes. Pushed him off. <laughs> New king of the mountains. Look at me. I'm king of the mountains. Don't come after me, Seth. Look at the little hole there. New king of the mountains. Okay, that's enough of that. This is Sandra's favorite kind of stair staircase. She doesn't have to walk. And here's John David. John David. So far, you didn't take one picture. Whoops, we're coming to the end. What? <laughs> Here we are at the top of the moving stairway. Here comes Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Hi, I have to walk from here to there. <laughs> it's your favorite stairway, huh? This is the drive going into the stadium. There's the stadium. We were going to the Padres, Atlanta Braves game. It's all sold out. This is the face of one unhappy driver because we didn't get tickets ahead of time. And in the back seat, we have Steve Andy, Susan Andy, and right over here, John David, I hope. Hi, no, John David. 
<laughs> These are the unhappy fans who are not going to the game tonight. Unless we can find a few tickets from a scalper somewhere. First, we have to get out of this lot, right, Don? They're burning. She does not Here's where we went to the movie instead of going to the ball game. <laughs> Here's what we did instead of going to the ball game. We went to the ball game and it was sold out. So we came to see Back to the Future 3 in here. What did you think of the movie, sir? Was it a very good movie, sir? Did you enjoy the movie, sir? Did you enjoy the movie, lady? We said the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry now and again. Now, as your mother said, there's many a slip twixt cup and lip. Also, there's many a slip twixt cup and lip. Right. <laughs> Instead of being at the ball game, she's at the movie theater. That's what we did. Here's Steve. He's talking to one of his friends. Here's Susan. Here's Sandra. Here's what's his name. What's your name, son? Um, I forgot. Oh, he forgot. He's been back to the future. This is Steve giving John David some instructions about the surfboard. I don't know exactly what he's saying, but he's giving him instructions. And he's been riding on the boogie board for about an hour. I'm sure he's getting tired. He's showing him how to stretch, how to get up on the board. so I will. Okay, they're working their way out to the first surf area. People teach him right here where it's shallow, so. Showing him how to get up on the board.
I guess getting out there is the hardest part. It is. Oh, that's a big oh, wave. Wow. Oh, they went through that one. I went somebody on a bicycle. ride again but that'll help him with his boogie boarding you know to catch a wave it be your son You're gonna sleep all the way to Japan <laughs> where's Jim I haven't seen him okay the camera, recording. The thing's going around it's recording now it is recording does he say recording at the top yeah it does yeah Oh well.